Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 49 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we will be talking about that hundreds of students from a number of universities in Bandung, West Java gathered in a room full of laptops during an Amazon Web Services cloud computing training event recently. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be on this show and this is kind of an interesting topic because it is kind of a popular way people are learning to learn. Yep, it really is. I guess the opening question is, do you think that boot camps are still a great approach to learning? Yeah, I do. I'm kind of sold on boot camps. Um, they, when cloud first started, uh, they had uh, you know cloud camp and uh, you know then turned into DevOps camp and all these other sorts of things where they would just have an intense two-day learning experience. And, and people who typically wouldn't have time to take class over a series of weeks or even take online training, and they want to interact with people and they want to be able to ask instructors questions and the ability to kind of sit in a room and have a, everybody attention really directed at a particular skill that they're learning and be able to kind of get the energy of other people learning in the same thing. And I've taught a couple of boot, uh, boot camp uh, classes before and, you know, and I, I was just sold on it as far as, you know, as, you know, as someone who taught college for 10 years and, you know, going in every week and just getting bits and starts of the, of the topic. And, you know, hopefully we're, if we're able to separate things, people are going to be able to learn better. Now, if we're able to intensely direct them at the content, I think that's going to be a better learning experience going forward. So I think this is a new way to learn. We talk about computer-based training. I think that's going to have a place. But I think people still want to get up, go meet with colleagues, network with colleagues, network with potential employers, network with people who are going to help them and really kind of understand what the technology is and be able to ask questions, get those questions answered, work on things, build things, and have people look over your shoulder to see if you're doing it correctly, you know, versus, uh, you know, trying to do it through the technology stuff, which is fine, but I don't think you would really kind of get that inner, that in, uh, interactivity with the, uh, with, with, the, with the instructors and other people who are learning. So I think it's a great way to learn. I think that's what the trend is going forward. If anybody's going to get out of the, the office and go to a class, I'd rather see them go to a boot camp class. And by the way, most of these are held on weekends and evenings. Uh, so people are doing it in their spare time, you know, which says something because they're not, you know, waiting for the company to pay for them to go to a class during the day when they're working. And so they're doing this as an extension of their, of their job. Uh, um, providing with the ability to kind of uh, build out their skill sets so they can get better jobs, make more money, things like that. So I view people who go to this thing as kind of naturally ambitious as well. Yeah, it's a good driver, isn't it, for sort of the ambitious people that really want to make things a way of life and, uh, and adopt certain uh, principles of learning. And, and I'm with you on that. I think a boot camp is a great way of doing that. It's a great way of the building initiatives, building morale, in a marketplace, sharing ideas, sharing opportunities, networking and building that network out in a in a very concise, uh, deep dive kind of way because you're all there for one thing and, and you're all rolling your sleeves up for the good of the for, for the good of the projects within the boot camp. And I think that's really, uh, really key. So what would you like to see? How would you like to see the ideal boot camp? What would be the ideal boot camp for you? I know you've done a you've done a few and, and you've, you've been guest guest uh, presenters and keynote speakers at, at boot camps. But what would you what would you what would be your ideal boot camp? Let's build something. I mean, that'd be the best thing to do. I mean, uh, I, I, I would, um, you know, if I want to learn how to maintain a motorcycle, I would like nothing more than to, you know, walk into a room with somebody who's a master mechanic and have piece parts of a motorcycle laying everywhere and that person showing me how to assemble it or basically a team of us assembling it and getting it to work and solving problems and things like that. Well, the same thing here you know, give them a application to write, you know, some sort of a real application that solves a real problem. And not just aspects of it, but we're gonna write the whole damn thing. And we're gonna do so in a time box period of time under a lot of pressure and figuring out things yourself with the help of the instructors and other experts that are in the room. And so if you're able to figure out how you do database access, how you're gonna, you know, you know, basically deal with AWS provisioning and sort uh, you know, serve, whether to do serverless computing or, or container-based computing, what are the differences and things like that. The ability to kind of make these decisions in kind of a real-life way, using real-life problems, working with real technology, there's no substitute for it. And by the time you get out of there, you're going to have the confidence to go off and build these things versus 
just having the knowledge and not necessarily the hands-on confidence you need to go build it. Just getting the knowledge is one step, but actually applying it into a pro into solving a problem is another. And this basically does both. It gives you the knowledge, basically shows you how to solve a problem, and sends you out into the world, you know, ready to ready to take take on these these issues versus ready to just you know take on a job where you're going to have a, additional on-the-job training to get another couple of months' work to be where you can be, which is a couple of day, couple of three day boot camp. Yeah, great. No, I love it. I think I think that's uh, if it doesn't exist already, we should do it <laughs> uh, because I think you know building something that is practical and that's going to be implemented and that is robust enough to be used in in a real world, real life situation is not only a credit to the boot camp, but certainly a credit to the individuals that invest that time in coming along and committing to a project, as you say, in a in a in a sort of a, a relatively safe environment, but under a, a stress, you know, and I think that's very very important because the real world the real world is around that sort of time stress, isn't it? Uh, and making that happen. Yeah, it is. And I, I think that, um, you know, one of the things I used to do when I taught an architecture workshop um, boot camp was uh, go to the small business uh, uh, chamber of commerce and put out the, the a note that I'm willing to, in essence, build their architecture for them for free. And so they would come into my class and they would present to the class what their issues were, what they were trying to look into solve, what the existing environments were. And they would actually go through the building of the architecture, decomposing everything down to the functional primitive, building the network architecture, things like that, and giving it to a small business owner for free so they can go off, in essence, you know, build the thing out. And what I was kind of taken back when I, when I did that with the classes years ago, the ability for the class to, in essence, come up to something that was actually very, very good. Um, it's, and then when I thought about it, they had my input, they had the input of other of the experts that I invited in to participate in there. They had a lot of experience within themselves. They were, they were working with themselves to, uh, to in essence, uh, you know, get these issues solved, you know, most of them on their own. And there's something to be said about people who are just engaged in making that stuff happen, who have a passion for what they're looking to do. And I think these, these new boot camps do the same thing. I mean, go out there and find some charities, go find some willing small businesses that can't afford you know, someone to actually look into their cloud stuff or, you know, deploy their AWS stuff and, you know, just go ahead and have them build it, uh, you know, build it for free and, uh, and, and use real world problems and, you know, uh, that for, and just get real world experience. And I think there's no, no substitute. Yeah, very good. Very good. It moves us on nicely, actually, to your uh, top three tips, if we haven't already covered them. Uh, would you like to do some sharing of those top three nuggets of knowledge that you have there, Dave? <laughs> Yes, nuggets. Um, that's right. Time box training is indeed effective. It is effective, and so uh, I am a big proponent of it. And uh, I, I kind of view training as something that people like to do as quickly as they can, as effectively as they can, and be as engaged as they can. Um, I'm not actually a very good classroom trainer. I find when I go to conferences, I won't go to many presentations. I won't go to many classes and things like that because I don't learn that way. But I do learn if people are engaged, I'm able to interact with people, I'm able to ask questions, I'm able to, you know, kind of bear things out. And I think people are going to be most effective in doing that, especially, you know, we're dealing with a world where everybody's so stimulus overload today with social media, things like that. Your ability to engage with other human beings to get things done is going to be probably the most important skill that you can learn. However, you know, need to focus on the objectives of what we're looking to do. So don't take boot camps for things that are necessarily going to be not campable. In other words, uh, you know, we're getting into, you know, con conceptual things and things like that. Boot camps around building stuff. It's a maker's, it's a maker's um, uh, class. In other words, we're building something. Something's going to be outputted from this. It's going to work. It's going to function. It's going to do something. It's going to be something we can touch and solve a problem. Uh, focus on, you know, what's new and innovative um, and a good, you know, it's not a good path for the basics. I think that if we're focused on the new serverless technology from AWS, and we're going to basically build applications on that, become the best of the best in doing that. We're going to get people who are typically aware of the cloud, use the cloud, they use AWS, but not don't necessarily understand much about the serverless area. That's a good application for a boot camp. But if somebody is going to do, you know, database design and process design, things like that, uh, you need to probably do a, a video, um, do an online training based system for, for that, or Take a class. It's boot camps typically aren't going to be good at doing that. 
Yeah, you're right. It, it really is, you know, identifying the needs of why you're doing a boot camp and, and making sure it fits the technologies and the outcomes that you're trying to achieve. So great top tips there, Dave. And, and thanks for being part of the training show this week. It's been very insightful. It's always a pleasure. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's uh, training show. Uh, you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. All the shows are on podcast as well, so you can get us on iTunes and Stitcher. The links are below in the description box, so check those out if you don't want to watch us. Uh, we don't mind. We won't take it personally if you don't want to see us talking. That's okay. Um, also, we're on uh, other forms of social media. So you've got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, obviously. So check us out there. We've got some great blogs as well that David writes for us. Uh, all the links, are, as I said, are in the description box. So check those out. They come out on a weekly basis as well. Um, and yeah, and remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues. We really appreciate the support and for the cloud community, uh, looking at what we're doing and finding out some great information. Uh, and do remember to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future shows that come up. So again, thanks for watching and until next week.